this video I'm going to show you how to do the flange bearing. We're in chapter 8 and I'm just going to walk you through step by step how to draw the flange bearing. Step 1 says to open the MEC 1-1 drawing file and I've already got that one open as you can see. We need to go ahead and save it into your user directory. So I'm going to do file save as, put it into your 1405 folder and we're going to call this one flange bearing. look up top and you can see that you've got it in your home directory. Step 2 says to refer to the sketch to go ahead and get this thing set up. So what we're going to do now is actually just start the drawing itself. So if you look at the sketch you can see that it's, it's several concentric circles. I'm going to actually start it with just a line. The distance, I'll turn on ortho to make sure it's a perfectly straight line, the distance from the outermost circles and arcs is a distance of 8, so that's where I'm going to start with. This whole thing is symmetrical as well, so I can use the midpoint of this 8 line to do my center cylinder. I'm going to do the circle command. I'll go ahead and start over here at one end point, and the first circle that I'm going to draw is a radius of 1. I'll start the circle command again, and I'm actually going to do a counter bore in here, so I'll take that same center point, first diameter, I'll have to type in D, enter for diameter, and the first diameter it says is 0.75. I've got one more circle to draw here, and this one has a diameter of 1. So I've got three concentric circles here. The outer one's just going to be an arc. I'll end up trimming that. This exact same feature is on the other side, so I'm just going to use my copy command. Take those circles. Instead of having to draw it all from scratch again, I'll just copy it right over here. I've got some more circles that I need to draw in the middle, so I'm going to go back to my circle command, straight at the midpoint, and this time I'm going to do a diameter of, it says, 4. Got another circle to do, same center point, they're concentric, and this time this is for the counter sink. I've got a diameter of 1.5, got one more circle to do, and this last one is a diameter of 2.5. So I've got this taken care of, delete out this line here, and I've got all the, all the circles that I need. Now what I'm going to do is start my line command, and I need to connect these things. So I'm going to start the line command. I'm going to do shift right click and do tangent. And notice you can't really start with a tangent, so AutoCAD does this thing called a deferred tangent, where it kind of remembers the area that you want to keep as your tangency, and then watch what happens as I move this around, where it connects to that initial circle kind of adjusts. So I've done a deferred tangent there. I'm going to shift right click, select tangent again, and I'll just click right there, and it, it finds the tangency between those two points. So I will repeat the line command. Go ahead with tangent to tangent. Start the line command again. Tangent to tangent. And last time, tangent to tangent and I'm doing shift right click to get those temporary O snaps. And I've got this overall shape. One thing you don't want to do is uh, draw your line and try to go from quadrant to quadrant. I just want to show you what's going to end up happening. If you were to try to go to the quadrant, you'll see a little bump in there and it definitely you'll definitely notice a difference there. So make sure you're not snapping to quadrant. It's important that you're snapping to tangent. Now that I've got this taken care of, I can come over here and actually trim. Press enter click on those two little arcs here. So I've got my front view completely done. I'll go ahead and put in my um, center lines. I'll go to the annotate tab and pull this down. I'll go ahead and pin it so it stays open and I'll click on my center mark command. Click on the outermost arc and you've got that right there. So I've got my center marks. I'll go back home and now I'm going to draw the overall shape here. So what you can do is start the line command. Let's go back to the visible layer. Start the line command and you can you can do this how you'd like. I'm going to use my O-Track 
and just actually acquire this point here and then come straight across. Now that I've got it perfectly lined up, I'm going to come straight across. If the overall distance from midpoint to, or from center point to center point of those arcs was 8, plus each one of them had a radius of 1, my overall length here is 10. So I've got an overall length of 10, and then I've got a thickness of 1 here. I'm going to acquire that point just to come straight through. So I've got my shape right here and let's see I can do another maybe we'll just take a line straight through here from the midpoint it tells me the total height here is three but I've already got the one taken care of so I'm just gonna make this a two I'm gonna offset that line and if that's a diameter of four then I'm off I'm gonna offset it a distance of two on either side I'll go ahead and change this to be the center line layer and extend it. And I'll go back later and extend the center lines all the way across. Draw a line here. And it's looking good so far. Now what I need to do is draw the center line and the hidden lines for these little holes, the counter bores that I've got in here. So I'll go back to my line command. Let's go ahead and set my center layer current. Go back to my line command. I'm going to acquire this point. You could also use construction lines. Back to the line command. Acquire this point. And just a review of how you acquire a point. I'll just do it off to the side here. If you, you have to have O-Track on and then if you just hover right next to that edge, don't click on anything. You see how it left behind a little plus sign? As I get perfectly in line with that, either vertically or horizontally, it kind of projects. It gives me this green projection line. So that's called acquiring a point. If you want to unacquire a point, just hover next to it again and you lose that little plus sign. It's a pretty fabulous command to know about. So I'm going to go ahead and do my offset command. Now I've got a bunch of um, hidden lines. I'll set the hidden line layer current. And I'm going to do the offset command and I'm going to figure out where these circles are. You could definitely still project if you wanted to. Instead of the offset command you could project and just draw in your circles as hidden lines in this view. Let's see. I'll do it once where I project and once where I offset. So this is what I was talking about. You can project straight up here using your O-Track. Ooh, something went wrong, didn't it? Oh, it's the smaller diameter that I need. So that's the hole that's going all the way through it. That's the diameter of 0.75. The next thing that I need here is the larger diameter, which is the diameter of 1, but with this one it tells me that it has a depth of 0.125, and I'll bring this over, kind of acquire this point too. Oops, acquire the outer. Here we go. Straight down. So zooming in, this is what my counter bore looks like. I'm going to trim it out. I don't need this piece and I don't need that piece. I do still have the line going all the way across here. Once you've got that drawn, you could either mirror or just copy. You don't have to draw this again on the other side. Pick it up from the end point of the center line, place it over here, and I've got both of those taken care of. Now I'm going to do this counter sink that I've got in here. So for that counter sink, again, we've got some hidden lines. I've got a hole that's going to go all the way through it. This time, instead of using that O track where I'm projecting it up, I'm going to do my offset command. Just so you can see, there's lots of ways that you can do this. 
It's got a diameter of 1.5 that's going all the way through it, so I'm going to do an offset of half that, which is 0.75. Actually, when I start that offset command, let's make sure my layer settings are changed. So I'll do my down arrow to layer, or you could type L, enter for layer. And let's make sure that when it does the offset, that it uses my current layer and not my source layer. So current. Now my distance is 0.75, and I'll just offset this in both directions, 0.75. Now what I need to do is, again, you could offset or you can O-Track. I think I'm going to choose to O-Track on this particular one. I'm going to acquire that largest diameter, so this is that diameter of 2.5. I'm going to project that up so that I have a starting point, and then I'm going to draw an angled line. And so, as we learned during the lecture, if it says it's got an 82 degree countersink, the, the angle actually from, from zero up is actually 49 degrees. So you can make this any length that you want. And we got to that 49 by taking 82, you split that in half, so it's 41 on either side to make a 90 degree angle, and then 41 from that 90 equals 49, so that's where I'm getting this angle. Any length, I'm going to press tab 49, and I've got this guy right here, and now I'm just going to do the mirror command. I could do another line and do some math and figure that it's probably 131 degrees but mirror is easier, so I'm going to erase that source object, say no, and now I'm just going to come in here and do my trim command. Press enter when I start that. Trim this thing out, and I do have one more line that I need to put right inside of here. So this is almost done. What I actually need to do next is trim this little piece out here. Um, when, you, when it comes to that tangency, when you're viewing it in this view, you kind of lose that, that little line. So if I project a line up from the end point, from the end point here, I'm actually going to come inside and trim that to that line. So that's how it would actually end up looking. Let's do one more thing, and we're going to extend out these center lines. So I'm going to do modify, lengthen, L-E-N is what you could type in if you wanted. I'm going to do D-E for delta, and my new delta length, let's try 0.25. And every line that I click on is going to extend out 0.25. Press enter when you're done. And now I've got this one done. In the next video you're going to see, we'll take this and make it into a section view, which is a pretty simple step to do.